So the idea of this conference is to investigate how we can use different machine learning techniques to improve the design of optimization algorithms. I, I focus on metaheuristics based optimization algorithms. And then in this uh, talk, I have summarized the different ideas in designing metaheuristics data driven optimization using machine learning techniques to have more efficient optimization algorithms. So the main output of this presentation that will give a paper I'm, I'm finalizing is to give a survey or classification of the different ways we can use machine learning in optimization. So the most important output in this uh, presentation is to have not only a survey of the different uh, related work, but a unified way of how using machine learning in op into optimization. Unified way in which component of optimization we can add some machine learning techniques. So this is the, the main output of, of this presentation. Uh, good morning, thank you for coming. Uh, today we have with us Professor Talbi from the University of Lille, France. Uh, Professor Talbi is an expert in heuristics, metaheuristics, metaheuristics and competition in general. <laughs> um, well, following, following Google, Google Scholar, uh, his contributions have more than 15,000 uh, sites and he has an age index uh, close to uh, 55, so very high. <laughs> thank you for coming, thank you for your visit. Uh, the title for the seminar today is Machine Learning to Metaheuristics towards Data Driven Optimization and it's your turn, thank you. So thanks Juan for uh, the invitation. As you said, so this is my second home. Yeah. <laughs> you do want to. <laughs> so uh, today I will give you uh, a talk in which I will present uh, some what are the main works into how to use machine learning into optimization. So I, I will focus on metaheuristics, but all those ideas can be used in any optimization algorithm. So the idea is to give you survey or taxonomy of data driven optimization. So how to use machine learning strategies into, into optimization. So what is the motivation of this presentation? So if you are, if you are familiar with optimization algorithms or metaheuristics, you know that in general we don't use any knowledge that we are generating to, to extract some knowledge from the search. So the idea is to how to, to use machine learning to extract some knowledge from the data we are producing during the search. Offline or online? So this is the idea. And in general, metaheuristics or optimization algorithms are, are not doing this, this task. So what is the data we can use? So what is the input data? It can be static or dynamic. What I Call static is the data from the problem you are solving or from the instance features you are solving. There are similar problems, there are similar features, there are similar instances. So you can learn from the problem and you can learn from the data. So if you have a new problem that is similar to one popular problem, you can learn from that. Okay? And online, you are generating any optimization algorithms is generating a lot of data which kind of data we are generating. In, this, in the decision space, we are generating, of course, billions of solutions. <laughs> we can learn from those solutions. In the decision space and the objective space, we are generating moves, we are generating a combination, we are generating some local optima, we are generating... You can learn even from bad solution. Don't learn only from good solution, but you can learn from bad solution. You are generating sequence of data, because all all optimization algorithms are iterative algorithms, so you, you can learn from the, the trajectories, you can learn from the sequence of solution, you can learn from the sequence of population you are generating. So, we are generating data, the idea is how to learn from this data, online or offline. 
And of course, what is the objective? Is to make optimization algorithms or metalistics more smart <laughs> and, if you, if you like, well, well informed. This is the, the, the motivation and the objective. And so I, I'm finalizing a paper on uh, combining metallistics and machine learning or data drive and metallistics. And in the last years, there's increasing, for sure, there is increasing interest in using machine learning techniques in, in optimization. Okay? Don't forget the objective in optimization. Always the objective is equilibrate exploration and exploitation. Exploration means that you have to explore all the regions of the search space and exploitation you have to to use or to learn from good solution patterns to intensify the search. So this is intensification of the search, this is diversification of the search. So in any design of any optimization algorithms you have to do this equilibrium, this compromise, intensification, diversification. So, of course, what are the criteria? The quality of solution, we are here to improve the quality, we are here to improve the time, this is very important to reduce the search time, and of course we are here to, to improve the robustness. Robustness means if you have a stochastic algorithm or robustness according to the parameters, etc. Okay? So those are the motivations. Now, uh, what is the outline of my presentation? First, I will give you, of course, the, the main ingredient of uh, optimization and of machi machine learning. So, the main concept I will use in, in this presentation. Then, I have classified, I, have, I am proposing this classification on how to integrate machine learning in, into optimization. First, you can use machine learning in the target optimization problem. So everything related to your problem. So this is problem related. For instance, you can analyze the structure of your problem. You can use machine learning to decompose your problem. You can use machine learning in the, in the model of your problem, in the objective function, in the constraints. So those ideas are related to your target problem. So, I will give you some examples about that. Then, I will focus on what I call low-level co component of optimization algorithms. It means that you will integrate machine learning into, inside the algorithm. For instance, you can generate initial solution using machine learning. You can use machine learning in the design of the search operators. You can use machine learning in the selection of search operators and you can use machine learning in tuning the parameters because any algorithm has a lot of parameters. So the idea here is how to use machine learning inside the algorithm. And finally, machine learning in high level component means that not inside but outside, you can how to select, if you have so many algorithms, how to select the best algorithm, selection, how you generate automatically an algorithm so generation of metallistics. And finally, it can help you also to, to find the best combination or the best parallel, parallel cooperation between different components. So here you, you will use machine learning at the level of optimization algorithms. And here inside the optimization algorithms. And here inside your problem. Okay? So here I show you the, the plot on, of course, the, this is the Google uh, trend. So you see here machine learning is <laughs> a lot of uh, citation, but in blue you have metallistics and in, in, uh, in green you have both. So few papers until 2014, but I'm sure that in the last years you have much more papers. Good, so what are the ingredients uh, concerning optimization algorithms? As I told you, I'm, I will focus my talk on to, into metallistic class, but those ideas can be used in even exact algorithms. So as you know, in metallistics, there are two different classes of metallistics. Those based on single solution, so they, they are improving single solution, and here they are improving population of solution. So the most popular algorithm here is hill climbing, local search, gradient, Simulated and linear taboo search, those are the main 
single solution based algorithms. Okay? So they are improving the single solution and those are the improving population of solutions. For instance, evolutionary algorithms, uh, swarm intelligence, and colonies, etc. Okay? So as you know, of course, exact algorithms give you a uh, guarantee of the optimality, but of course you cannot use them in general for difficult problems, for large-scale problems. And metaheuristics can be used for any problem. They give you good solution, but forget about the guarantee of optimality. So the complexity in time is reasonable, polynomial in general, but we will forget, we will lose the guarantee about the optimality. Good. So just to, this is important to give you the main concept I, I, I will use into single solution based metaheuristics. So as I told you, in single solution based metaheuristics or local search based, you start from a single solution, you generate a neighborhood, you select a solution from the neighborhood, and you iterate. For instance, you have gradient search or local search. So we have a neighborhood, we, gen we generate a neighborhood, we select a solution, and then we iterate until a given stopping criteria. So in, in general, those arguments are converged towards local optima. This is why in the last 20 years, so many algorithms have been designed, designed to escape from those local optima. Simulation leaning, taboo search, variable neighborhood search, uh, GASP, etc. Iterative local search, etc. Et okay? But the idea here is single solution based, improving and iteration. Population based, they are improving population of solutions. So we start from random population of solution. We are not manipulating single solution, but population solution. And here we have a good population diversity, so they are more exploration oriented. And then there are so many algorithms here too. You have evolution algorithms, which will recombine directly solutions, particle swarm, scatter search, and you have some what I call indirect recombination, like ant colonies, EDA, etc. Et so, so many algorithms have been designed which are based, in general, from biologically inspired or nature inspired, okay? So, now forget what are the main involved ingredients of metallistics. This is the, the very important question. So forget about the names. There are so many algorithms, okay? <laughs> there are so many algorithms. Let's focus on what are the main concepts, okay? So, at the problem level, what are the main concepts we can manipulate. Objective function, of course, the constraints, the landscape analysis, you analyze the structure of your problem, the fitness landscape, the objective landscape, and the composition of the problem. So th those are the main concepts I will focus on. And you are okay with me that those concepts are present in any problem, in any model. <laughs> you are dealing with that, okay? Then, what are the main uh, concepts in low level that are driving metaheuristics? You are okay with me that in generating the initial solution, in any algorithm you have to use, you initialize the solution. How you design your operators? There are so many. Neighborhood, mutation, crossover, velocity, etc. How you select your operator at runtime and how you tune your parameters. So those, are, those concepts are present in any metaheuristic. And then, high-level data driver metaheuristics, how you select your metaheuristic, or how you select your algorithm. How you generate your algorithm, there's some work that tries to generate automatically the algorithm. And then, we can help you in designing hybrid metaheuristics, we can help you to design parallel cooperative metaheuristics. And finally, for all of those, techniques, integrating machine learning, you can do it offline or online. Offline means that before the execution of the algorithm, you can use some machine learning. And online, during the search, you are using machine learning. Okay? Good. So now what, what are the, the basic ingredients of machine learning? So, Machine learning extracts some knowledge 
models or patterns from the data. Okay? So I, I will use those uh, five different techniques, very well known techniques. You can do some supervised learning, regression or classification. So here you will predict the class from different attributes. This is a very popular uh, task in machine learning. You can use non-supervised learning. So you can do some clustering. So here you will partition the data in different clusters. So this is non-supervised learning. So those are the main tasks of machine learning. You this is also a very important task, feature selection. You have a set of attributes, set of variables, and what are the most important variables. This is a very important task. Association rules, correlation, you, can, you will study the correlation between variables. And you imagine this can help us to, to design metaheuristics. And of course, reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is ha problems involving an agent interaction with an environment and which provide numeric reward, okay? So you have an agent, you have your environment, this is what we call sequential learning. This is based on Markov decision process. So there is no, at the beginning, there is no knowledge. There is no data. Okay? And then we interact with the environment. The environment may be our, the problem. <laughs> okay? And the reward may be our objective function. And then we, we learn sequentially. We take decision, we see the reward, and then we, we do some sequential machine learning. So those are the main uh, tasks I will use in, 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 in my talk, okay? But of course, I will not give you a lecture today in machine learning, but as you know, for every task, there are so many different techniques, from statistical learning, from machine learning, from artificial intelligence, from statistics, from database, from... So, for instance, reinforcement learning, you have some model-free or model-based techniques, like uh, policy gradient or Q-learning, or deep reinforcement learning, feature selection, you have some filter methods, some wrapper methods, some regularization techniques, clustering, you have some hierarchical clustering, partitioning methods, model-based clustering, grid-based clustering, density-based, association rules, a priori, this is a very popular algorithm, and classification, uh, so many techniques, neural networks, linear regression, Gaussian process, logistic regression, deep learning, there are so many different techniques. But I will not, this is not important for us today. What is important, just keep in mind those different tasks. Which use, it's out of the scope. You can use any, any algorithm. Good. Let's start now. Remember, let's, let's come back to this. So the rest of my presentation, I will start to talk about that perhaps with this, and then problem level, and then high level. So I will focus only on those questions. And for any, every question, I, I give you some, some related work, or some ideas, okay? So this is the organization, the outline of my presentation. So let's start. Let's start with the initial solution or the initial population. So as you know, in any optimization algorithm, you have to generate the initial solution or you have to generate the initial population. What we are doing in general? In general, we are doing, we are doing random. <laughs> any, in general, we are doing random. So the most commonly used technique is random solution. So random solution, of course, in general, they will, it will give you bad quality solution. If not, it means that the problem is easy to solve. So in general, if you are using random, you will get bad quality solution. And even, some people think that diversification is ensured by random. No. Even for diversification, you are not sure that you will have good diversification in the search space using random uh, diversification. Okay? So what is the motivation in using machine learning in initial solution generation? Of course, to improve the solution quality of the initial solution, to reduce the computational cost, the time, the number of iteration or the object. This is a very important issue in optimization. How to reduce the number of objective function evaluation. Because 99% of the time in optimization is in the evaluation of the objective function. This is the most time consuming part. So you have to reduce it. And improve the robustness. Good. So data drive and initial solution, there are three different techniques. First, 
how to incorporate some knowledge for anthocification in the initial solution. I will, we will uh, see some examples here. So this is the first idea. So improving anthocification by incorporating some knowledge, some patterns in the initial solution. I know those patterns are good. So why generating random solutions? I will try to, to include some patterns in the initial solution that I know those patterns are good. The second idea is, is to improve diversification. Improving diversification by fixing some position of the solution to, to ensure good diversification in the search space. This is the second idea. So first idea, improving intensification. Second idea, improving diversification. And third idea is to just generate good solution. How machine learning can help us to generate good solution. So those are the three ideas in terms of generating the initial solution or population. So let's focus on those different families of techniques. So the first one is incorporating knowledge for intensification in the initial solution. So the idea here is you are solving a given problem. So you can, you can extract knowledge from past similar problems or from instant solving. You are solving so many instances, you are solving some similar problems. So why you don't integrate some good patterns that you will extract from those data? Okay? So machine learning can provide good understanding of the relationship between the features in the decision space huh, of the problem. So here, there are some papers, just give you some ideas, but of course I have in the paper, I have the reference of, of the, those ideas. Some people are using some case-based reasoning to initialize the population. Some people are using classification into local search to, to improve or to integrate the patterns in the initial solution, association rules, neural networks. And you can do even what we call transfer learning. Transfer learning means how to learn from similar problems. If you are solving a problem that is similar to another one, you can do some transfer learning. Transfer learning that you will reuse the knowledge you have from the other problem solving. So what is the idea? The idea is you have, the training set is the set of instances, or even the set of problems, okay? For every problem, the set of instances. You, you apply your optimization method, and here you, you, you will have solutions, okay? Good, good set of solutions. And the idea is to ex extract from this, uh, this set of solutions, you do some machine learning, okay? You have some features, okay? You do some machine learning techniques, as I told you here, classification, or association rule, and then you will extract what are the good patterns in the solution. What are the good patterns? And then those patterns, you will use them into the metaheuristics, and if, when you have a new instance, you will reuse those patterns. So this is the, the methodology, how to use machine learning into new instance problem solving. And then you have good solution, and you can even learn from, from the new solution. So you can use association rules, for instance. Association rule will find the good patterns in, in the solutions. You can find classification, you can do some classification models that tells you what is, what is a good solution, how you, why the solution is good, okay? Then you can use machine learning to, to improve the diversification. As I told you, don't imagine that random solution is optimal in terms of diversification. And here you can use some, um, uh, what, an, just an example, so you can use some reinforcement learning, multi-armed bandit and reinforcement learning techniques that will select the good regions to explore in, 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 in real time. And you can use those techniques and in statistics, orthogonal experimental design techniques. The idea of uh, experimental design is which point here you have to, to start with. You have, you have so many decision variables, so how to fix the initial point? Instead of doing it 
randomly, you can do it doing it using some statistical techniques like experimental design or some reinforcement learning techniques that will explore the search space in an efficient way. So as I told you here, machine learning can be used to, to improve the diversification by using some reinforcement learning techniques because I'm not, I don't know if you are familiar with them reinforcement learning and this multi-arm bandits. The idea of multi-arm bandit is exactly to find the optimal solution in terms of exploration and exploitation. So this exactly solves our problem. And finally, of course, this is classical way. Finally, you can use machine learning to generate good initial solution. Just generate good initial solution. So many techniques here. You can use uh, interpolation techniques to, to, to generate initial solution. You can use even neural networks to generate the initial solution. You can use what we call op opposition-based learning to, to find quickly, very quickly, good solution. Instead of generating random solution, those techniques will quickly generate good initial solution that would, we would start with. So, I, I give you here the, the main ideas I found, I found in the literature. So those techniques are, are uh, interesting techniques because greedy, reinforcement learning can be considered like such as greedy techniques. It's a greedy way to generate solutions. Here neural networks have been used to, in multi-objective optimization to, to find for multi-objective values and give you what are the what are the, the optimal value expected to be to be uh, uh, efficient. So the idea is to to use some machine learning techniques to find very quickly good initial solution. Okay, now switch what we can do with the objective function. We f finish with the initial solution. What we can do with objective function of your problem? You have, a pro you have a given problem, you have an objective function. How we can use machine learning related to your objective function? So the, the, are the first idea is to change your objective function, change it. So suppose that you have a given problem to solve with a given classical objective function. We can even what we call learnable objective function, change your objective function to make the problem more easy to solve. I give an example. In many problems, in many problems in practice, you have this, you have large plateaus. It means that many, many, many solutions are this, have the same quality. So if you are familiar with scheduling problems, with routing problems, many, many problems, you have search space that many solutions have the same quality. So if you have this kind of problem, any algorithm will fail. <laughs> if you have large plateaus in your search space, any algorithm will fail. How, how he will navigate in this search space? It's difficult. All, all so many solutions are the same. And believe me, many problems have this, this, have this characteristic. So the idea is to, to add some knowledge in your objective function to make the problem more smooth than plateaus. So make it more smooth to, to make difference between solutions. Make solution different. So in many problems, you can add some knowledge in the objective function. And this knowledge depends on the patterns that you are using to differentiate, to discriminate solution with the same quality. You have to find some patterns or some features that discriminate the solution. What is a good solution? The objective function is not sufficient to discriminate the solution. You have to find other patterns, other features that discriminate the solution. This is the job of machine learning, <laughs> to find the good patterns or the good uh, features that discriminate the solution. So this is specific to a problem, but this idea has been largely used. And then, if there are some people here, uh, engineers, means from mechanical engineering or uh, automotive, or there are many problems 
where the objecting function is very, very expensive. For instance, what we call black box optimization or simulation based optimization in biology, in me mechanical engineering, in automotive, in space design, in any design problem, the objecting function is very, very expensive. It can take two days, one week to evaluate one solution. You, you can never solve this kind of problem using the original objective function. This is a very hot topic today. What we call surrogate or metamodeling or surrogate based optimization. What is the idea here? The idea here is to approximate the objective function. I cannot use the original objective function. For instance, if you, 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 you would design a bridge in mechanical, uh, in uh, civil engineering, or if you design a car in automotive, or you design anything, you have to simulate the system. And this simulation can take hours, days, and weeks. So if one solution takes one week, you can never use traditional techniques to optimize. So the idea here is to use surrogate-based optimization or metamodeling, metamodeling-based optimization to approximate the objective function. What is approximating the objective function? This is classification. <laughs> this is regression. So the idea is you will just evaluate some points of the search space and then predict, predict the, the, the objective function. And this is the job of regression or classification. So you will, you will not use the original objective function. You, are, you will use a predicted one. So this is very classical. What is new, I will tell you what is new, but this is classical techniques in any engineering discipline, they are using this. They are using what we call surrogates or metamodels. And of course, here you can use thousands of techniques, deep networks, regression, random forest, decision tree. This is not the question. And you can, use, uh, you can do some clustering to reduce the number of evaluation. You will do some clustering, and then for any solution of you, can, you will consider it's the same quality. If they are, they are in the same cluster, it's the same quality. You don't need to, to reevaluate it. So, what is new in the, in the last five years? In the last five years, what is new is this kind of, this family of techniques, what we call surrogate-based optimization, or surrogate-assisted optimization. The, the, the new way to do this kind of things is to, instead of do it, doing it in st static way, we will do it in interactive and dynamic way. I will explain, describe this kind of things. Suppose that you have to optimize this function. I don't know the function, just to, I will give you the function, but I consider that I, know, I don't know this function. So suppose that we are optimizing this function. This function is very, very expensive. I cannot evaluate all solution. So, and suppose that I'm using Gaussian network cleaving. This is one known statistical technique to do to do the prediction, okay? So the idea is, first, we, we do some sampling the objective function, Latin, for instance, using the Latin hypercube design, just sample very few points, very, very few, four or five. So here I sample using this, uh, you know, experimental design that I showed you at the beginning. So I generate four solutions, very few solutions, and then, I will evaluate those solutions with the original objective function. The original objective function. So suppose that, yes, so those are the evaluation. Then I will use a prediction. I will predict this function. I have four points. I will predict this function. Suppose this is the red one. I'm using some Gaussian network ridging, but you can use any techniques. Huh? So the prediction function is the red one, okay? It's not good prediction, no? But at this point, because I have only four solutions. So now I will optimize the predicted function. I will optimize this function, but I will, not, I, will, I will use another objective function, what we call the expected improvement. So if I'm using this uh, Gaussian process, this is statistical techniques, it will give me the average and the, the confidence. The, this, this, you, you see this, this plot? So I have this information. I have this information. I have, this point is exact. So here the confidence is 100%. This point, I have the average and I have the, 
the interval, confidence interval. From those two information that the model gives me, Gaussian Gaussian process give me this information, I will optimize the expected improvement. I, I have no time to explain. So I will, I will give a priority to good average solution, and I will give priority to, to solution with large confidence. Those, we have to go there. And those good solutions, we have to go there. So I will compute some expected improvement, which balance between exploration and exploitation. So this is the function I will optimize. Why this, this is good quality? Because the confidence here is very important. I have to go there to see what happens. So I will optimize this function quickly. And then suppose that this is the optimal solution I found. What I will do now? I will compute the real objective function on this point. <laughs> Just one point. And then what will happen? I have the exact here. I will iterate, repredict the objective function. What is the nice idea here? The nice idea is that we do it offline, iterative way, and we just evaluate solutions that we have to evaluate. Solutions that I know that those solutions are not are bad. No way. I will never go there. I will, no, I will never evaluate the original function there. I will evaluate the evaluation function in the good places, the good regions. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, I will iterate. I will, I will uh, regenerate this uh, expected improvement. I will, perhaps the, the, the new point will be, I don't know, will be here perhaps. And then I will iterate this assisted, surrogate assisted optimization. And at the end, I have minimized the number of points evaluated by the original function. 10, 20, nothing. If not, I will <laughs> generate thousands, millions, billions. This is very, very, uh, very high topic today. We had an European project on this kind of things with people from engineering, space design, automotive design, even in biology. Pharmacology, they have <coughs> complex simulation. Civil, civil engineering. Those people are doing this every day. If you, t if you have some colleagues from mechanical engineering, every day they are solving such problems. They are doing simulation. What is the best design? And simulation takes a long time. Good. Now the next question is, how you design your search operators into optimization, into metaheuristics? Okay, what are the operators in optimization? If you are using greedy techniques, which kind of greedy operators? If you are using local search, it can be neighborhood. If you are using evolution algorithms, unary operators means that you improve a single solution, okay? It can be the neighborhood. What is the, the correct neighborhood? The size of the neighborhood. This is a very important issue in, in uh, in continuous optimization, in gradient, in gradient techniques, basic techniques, the size of the step is very important. How you, you fix it? Step size. The size of the neighborhood, the correct neighborhood, and how, which neighbors you will generate. If your neighborhood is very large, which neighborhood you will generate? You, you are not obliged to generate all the neighbors. So, in greedy algorithms, those constructive algorithms, you can use, as I told you, reinforcement learning and Q-learning are greedy techniques. So you can use those machine learning greedy techniques into the design of the greedy operator that helps you to generate the new, the new solution in a greedy way. So there are some papers, for instance, in ant colony optimization. Ant colony optimization is a greedy way to generate solution. Okay? So instead of using this pheromone based, you will use some reinforcement learning based. Because, as I told you, reinforcement learning is a sequential process. It's a greedy process. So it's very <coughs> well adapted to such kind of techniques. In single solution-based metaheuristics, those questions are very important. For instance, the size of the neighborhood, the generation of the neighborhood. You can use some clustering to, to generate only the predicted good neighbors. Don't generate all the neighbors. 
And if you are familiar with the evolution algorithms, let's focus on crossover. What is crossover? You have two solutions, and then you recombine in a random way. Random way, it's always random. Cat recombine, random way. And the idea here is don't do it random way. <laughs> for instance, for instance, you have this is the history of the search. Huh? You can use some machine learning techniques to design the operators. I give you an example. Suppose that <coughs> suppose that those are your solution. Random way is cut at given random point and then exchange. This is the random crossover. The idea in machine learning, before doing it randomly, extract what are the good features in, in your solution. What are the good features? So from the, from the history of the search, you can extract the good features. For instance, suppose that, suppose that you, you apply some association, association rule, and the association rule will give you, will say, this solution is good, or this pattern is very important. The black one here. Five, five, one, five, one. This pattern is makes good solution. So instead of doing it randomly, use the good patterns into your crossover. So for instance, if you are using association rule, it will give you, during the search, it will tell you this pattern is good. So let's reuse this pattern into the next solution you are, you are generating. Well, you can even reuse the good patterns in, into your solution. Don't do it randomly. So here you can use any, any classification or regression or association rule techniques to extract the good patterns, and those good patterns fix them. Not, don't do it randomly. This is the idea, but of course there are so many different techniques to do it. And even in this combination and even in the selection of solution. Don't select, the selection is random. Don't select random. Select the good pair of solution using, for instance, some clustering. Don't recombine solutions that are so different, for instance. Recombine solutions that are more or less similar. Because if you recombine solutions that are so different, it's like you are doing random <laughs> generation. So you can learn from the structure of your solution to select, doing the good selection. And of course, you can use uh, machine learning ideas in intensification, diversification, etc. Let's, uh, and that, some metallistics are doing this kind of things. If you are familiar with uh, this met those metallistics, Bayesian based optimization, or uh, estimation distribution algorithms, or population based incremental learning, what is the idea here in this class of families? So, so metallistics are doing this job. So the idea here is they're not doing Darwinian evolution computation. They are doing non-Darwinian evolution computation. What's the idea? So those Darwinian evolution algorithms are doing a combination mutation randomly. The idea in those algorithms, forget about this, from the population, from the population, they are learning probability distribution. They are learning a model. So you have population of solution, you extract a model which describes a good solution. And here are, there are so many models. Here they are using Bayesian models, here they are using simple probabilistic models. And when you extract the model from this population, you will use this model, you will sample this model to generate new solution. <laughs> this is the idea. So in this families of metallistics they are doing machine learning with, with simple models probabilistic simple models, some Bayesian models, to extract a given model from the population. And once the model is generated, they are sampling from this model to generate new solution. <laughs> Good. Now, let's switch to this parameter and search operators setting. This is very important, parameter tuning. 
in any optimization algorithm there are so many parameters. How to tune this parameter? You will not play with that. Do it in a rigorous way. So the idea here, as I told you, in the minimum number of parameters you can find is 5 to 32. This is a huge number of parameters. How to, to deal with this? So you have quantitative parameters and you have qualitative parameters. Quantitative parameters meet the numeric. <laughs> In single solution based metallistics, the stopping criteria, the number of iterations you have to do, the tabulist size, the temperature in simulated in a leaning, those are numeric parameters. In population based metallistics, if you are using PSO, you have velocity. In evolution, you have the size of the population, the probability of application. There are so many numeric parameters, quantitative parameters. And you have also qualitative parameters, those are categorical and ordered means that if you have many neighborhoods, how you select a neighborhood? If you have many variation operators, how to select the best? So those are categorical parameters. So the idea here is how machine learning can help in tuning the parameters, offline or online. Offline, you can do it offline before the execution or you can do it online during the execution. So offline, you can use some unsupervised plus supervised machine learning, which is problem-based. For instance, you can use this uh, factorial design, how you decompose your parameter space. So suppose that those are the parameter space. You are factor, three factors here. Suppose that you have two parameters, three parameters. So there are some techniques from uh, experimental design. Those are some techniques, design of experiment, or Taguchi, fractional experimental design, or cor correlation graph decomposition, those techniques will help you to find at least a good set of parameter values. Don't do it randomly, this is not good. Do it using some rigorous techniques from statistics. And you can use some supervised machine learning. So this is problem-based, this is instance-based. For each instance, here for each problem, for each instance you can do some training and learning. Some training for a given problem, some training for a given instance. So for a given instance, of you, you apply machine learning and you have the model that gives you, for any instance, the best parameters. Because the parameters depend on you, the instance. You, don't ha you will not have optimal parameters for all instances or for all problems. It depends on your problem and it will depend on the instance. Here the idea is to learn from, if you have a new instance, what are the best parameters? Offline. So you, you have the model that gives you the best parameters for a given instance, and here you have a new instance to solve. The model will give you the parameters that you have to, to use, the parameters value. And this model is found by any supervised learning techniques with given training, and then it, it will predict the best value for this given instance. Okay? And you can do it online. Online means that the values will change during the search. Here the values are fixed during the search. Okay? But the problem is the values are not optimal depending on the step of your search. So online, the different values of your parameters will change during the search according to the new data is coming. You have to change the values. For instance, so there are different techniques that have been used. Sequential learning approach, this is the most popular. Many techniques from adaptive pursuit approach or multi-armed bonded reinforcement learning use those techniques to learn the optimal values during the runtime. Okay? You can use some classification regression to predict the parameter setting on the basis of the current status of the search. Okay? For instance, linear, linear regression or support vector machine. And you can use it, you can use some clustering techniques, clustering approach to give you, for instance, what are the values to use for given, in a given cluster or region to, you are exploring. So, 
so different ideas from reinforcement learning, from supervised learning, from non-supervised learning are, have been used to do online learning of the best parameters to tune in real time. Huh? And finally, this is very popular, how you, you learn about the problem structure. You would like to learn about the problem structure, your problem structure. And here, this is exploratory landscape analysis. You have different features, and then you will have some statistical or machine learning measures that give you an idea about the landscape you are solving. What is the correlation? What is the fitness distance correlation, for instance? What is the ruggedness or the smoothness of your space or your search space? Are there any plateaus or neutrality in your search space? What is the, the, the attraction size of your basin of attraction? What is the size of the basin of attraction? What is the multimodality? What is the variable correlation? If you have continuous problem with millions of variables, what are the correlation between variables? So those features, problem features, can help you to, to analyze the, the fitness landscape, the structure of the problem. And of course, when you learn from the structure of your problem, you will design more efficient algorithms. So this is very popular. Okay, uh, this is also very interesting nowadays. This is one of my uh, current research, is how, to, do, how to, to use machine learning to apply some decomposition in your problem. Because, you know, the problems that we have to solve now are huge large-scale problems. You cannot solve them as a whole. You, c you have to decompose the problems. And machine learning here can help you to, to decompose your problem. You ca it can help you to, to decompose the input data. You can decompose the decision space. Okay? For instance, you can, you can do some feature selection or clustering or classification to reduce the number of variables. Reduce the search space, reduce the decision space. You can reduce the, the constraint space, which constraint you have to do some relaxation. You can, you, you can reduce the objective space for people familiar with multi objective optimization. If you have many objectives, reduce them. So, in many objective optimization, you have to reduce the objective space. And finally, you can even reduce what I call the data space. Suppose that in scheduling and in routing, this is a vehicle routing problem, you have so many data. The idea, don't solve the problem with the whole data, but reduce the data space to make the problems more and more small, easiest to solve. For instance, this is the vehicle routing problem. Suppose that those are the client of your system, geographical client, do some clustering to reduce the size, to do decomposition. And then, for each cluster, solve the problem. For instance, this is one idea. So you can use machine learning to decompose your decision space, the constraint space, the objective space, and the data space. And even you can do some decomposition in the output. For those who are familiar with multi-objective optimization, the output will be a set of solutions, what you call the efficient frontier or the Pareto frontier, okay? How you learn from this output? It's difficult to learn from this output. If you do some machine learning in the output, you can learn more about your problem. For instance, I know some people, uh, we are doing some clustering from the output to, to, to make some interactive optimization with the expert, with the decision maker. So machine learning, it's not only in the input, but from the output. You can learn from your output. What are the import important issues for decision maker preferences? to do some interactive optimization. For instance here, if you give thousands of solutions to the decision maker, come on, you will never learn from that. But if you do some clustering and you will present only one solution from each cluster, he can say something. He will tell you this solution is good. It means this cluster is good. And then you will focus your search in this cluster and you will forget about those other clusters. So machine learning can help even the decision maker to, to learn from, from the output. Good. Ah, 
Oula, the battery. <laughs> this is online optimization. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Now, you have, suppose that this is the case, you have so many algorithms, you have so many optimization algorithms, and you have a new problem. What is the best algorithm? How will you select the best algorithm? This is a very important question. So, in the design space of metallistics, you have a huge number of metallistics. You have a huge number of optimization algorithms. And even in given discipline, you have a set of algorithms. This problem is called the algorithm selection problem. Which algorithm you will select? So the selection of metallistics, this problem it can be generalized to the algorithm selection problem. It's a very old problem. Not only for optimization, but for any discipline. You have a set of algorithms. What's the best? <laughs> you can do it offline. But you can even do it online, change the algorithm during the search. So offline, I have different formulation. You can formulate it as classification, you can formulate it as regression, and you can formulate it as clustering. <laughs> so if you, if you formulate this problem as a classification problem, so you will have a classifier that predicts the best algorithm. You will learn for your problem, the input are the different algorithms, and you will learn what's the best performing for a given instance from the model. So this is classification formulation. So this is multi-class classifier. It gives you which one, discrete. You can do some regression. Here you will predict the performance, value, continuous value, score. It will give you a score. And then you will, you will, for instance, linear regression, and then you will take the best algorithm with the best score. And even you can formulate it as clustering. You will cluster your problem instance in a feature space and select the best for each cluster. Your instance space, you will cluster the instance space, and for each cluster you will, you will select the best one, and you have new instance, you will see which, which cluster, in which cluster this instance is, and then you will select the best algorithm for this cluster. So, as you see, you can formulate it as classification, regression, clustering, and many papers deal with this kind of, of, of problem. Now you can do it online. The learning takes place during the search. At the beginning, all algorithms are competitive. And during the search, you will selected at each iteration who is the best one. Which technique is very ad adapted for that? Reinforcement learning. This is exactly, people in reinforcement learning, this is exactly what they are doing. Each step, the set of decision, what, what's the best decision? You, so you can formulate this problem as a reinforcement learning problem. But, if you have a lack of data on benchmark, you can, you can have some overfitting. Be careful, because many people are using always the same benchmark, the same benchmark, so there is a kind of overfitting according to those benchmark. And then let's, let's imagine that in the future, we can also ask the question, we generate automatically the best algorithm automatic design of algorithms. Why not? Why not? There are some papers that you use different machine learning strategies like genetic programming, learning classified system, symbolic regression that tries to generate automatically the best algorithm for this problem. The results to nowadays are not competitive, but this is a nice question to solve. If you model your problem, you have the different search concept, you can generate automatically new optimization algorithms from the search component of existing one, and then you will find for each component the best one, and you generate automatically your 
optimization algorithm. So, I hope that you are convinced that machine learning is a must today in designing efficient optimization. Still some time to bridge the gap between the different communities because, you know, the, the machine learning community, optimization communities nowadays are not communicating a lot. The conferences are so completely different. Still some uh, energy to spend to, to, to make and I didn't, yeah, I have another presentation next time, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is also very important. I, I, I deal in this presentation machine learning into optimization. What's about optimization in machine learning? A lot of things to say about that. And here, still to bridge the gap between the two communities. <laughs> Because I can tell you that all machine learning problems are optimization problems. All those problems are formulated as optimization. So we have something to say. <laughs> so, in the paper I'm finalizing, I try to guide the design of efficient data driven metallistics using this unified classification. To my, to my knowledge, this is the first time we, we have this kind of generic survey. And but, be careful. <laughs> when you are using machine learning, you have extra cost. So, the question is, what is the trade-off between the benefits and the additional cost of learning? You are, you are adding a cost in your algorithm if you are up using some machine learning. So, this cost must be, must give improve the results to reduce or to eliminate this cost. And be careful about this overfitting, of course. If, if the data is lacking, if there is no lot of data, you can have this overfitting problem. Yeah, so I hope that uh, in two, three months I will, I will finish this paper. And yes, as I told you, next is optimization for machine learning. And here there are so many, so many things to, to focus on. And of course, a lot of promising, uh, a lot of, of per nice perspectives in research. Of course, there are new advanced, very advanced machine learning techniques. Deep Gaussian network, deep reinforcement learning, deep learning, CNNs. Uh, so the idea is to use those advanced, very advanced, efficient techniques into, into metallistics. Of course, you can use those ideas in other optimization algorithms, not only in metallistics, in exact optimization, in interval programming, in Monte Carlo research, in mathematical programming. How can we use those machine learning techniques in other optimization? In exact optimization, in mathematical programming, in uh, interval programming, in global optimization. I didn't focus on more complex problems, multi-objective problems, B-level problems, optimization under uncertainty. You can learn, even in this, there are many, many perspectives in this uh, area. If you have dynamic optimization uncertainty, you can learn about the model of the uncertainty. And of course, this is uh, more software engineering, but this is very important. Because in, in machine learning, what is very nice today in machine learning, they have some libraries. You don't need to do, to develop nothing, A everything. To, this is what makes machine learning today very, very popular. Everyone is a data scientist today, you know. Everyone can be considered as a data scientist. Why? Because they don't have to develop any line of code. Yeah, I don't know if you are, there are so in R, in, um, there are some libraries in Python, in one hour, you can use everything I, 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 I told you about in this lecture about machine learning. All the techniques are there, all the tasks are there, you can use it in one day. You can use everything. In optimization, this is not the case. It's much more <laughs> complex. So, there are some... In my team, we are trying to, uh, to develop our software in uh, this Python-like languages or R to, to couple those two, two words. And of course, this is very, very important. You know, this large-scale parallel implementation 
uh, from the two sides, from the optimization, optimization side, from the, from the machine learning side, if you don't use today GPUs or multi-cores, how, how you can learn from those deep networks, it's impossible. So this is a must. Today, if you don't have those architectures, you cannot, you cannot apply those techniques. You cannot apply those methodologies. So this is not um, an option, this is a must. And uh, in two, three months, we will be not far from here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so submission is finished, of course. <laughs> so don't submit. It's too late. But uh, we have a nice uh, set of papers. We have more uh, than 50 papers accepted from very nice papers from different uh, parts of the world. And we will be in Cadiz. And we, we create this conference. The first one was in Alicante. Huh? So the first edition of this conference was in Alicante. Why we create this conference? As I told you, to bridge the gap between those people. You have machine learning conferences, you have optimization conferences. You don't have any conference that deals with the two. So we will focus on optimization learning. So the first edition two years ago was in Alicante. Last year we went to Thailand, Bangkok, and then we come back to, to Spain. So this is our second home, you know. <laughs> One time outside Spain and then we come back to Spain. Uh, and of course we have a lot of... Uh, so we make it this year, we make it... Um, uh, all papers are in Springer proceedings. All long papers are in Springer proceedings. And we, we are organizing many special issues. You know, have a look to this uh, website. We have at least three or four special issues in, in good journals like Applied Soft Computing and that Soft Operation Research, etc. <coughs> good. So this ends my talk. If you have any question. For example, it's better to spend a lot of time to generate good seeds to start the algorithm or more um, worth solution other steps than in the initial one? Oh, I will never give you an answer for this kind of question because it depends on the, the characteristic of the problem you have. So the, the question is, uh, the time you spend in intensification according to, to search or? Yeah, the, the seeds, the initial solution are really important to obtain an uh, optimal solution at the end or could be a uh, very bad solution at the initial step can converge to uh, an optimal one. First, it depends on your problem. It's if, if it's continuous problem or discrete problem, the like answer is completely different. Okay, so. Let's say, first, be careful about diversification from the initial set of solutions. You need to use those ideas of experimental design or uh, to have well deterministic way to generate your solution. And then, how much time you will spend to the search compared to the intensification? This is a parameter that you can learn from machine learning. So your problem can be formulated as machine learning problems. And for my instance, for my problem, what is the, the, the energy I will put in the generation of good solution compared to the energy I will put to intensify the search? So your question can be formulated as machine learning problem or it's parameter tuning. Mm -hmm. So you have you introduced the parameter. What is the time I will spend in the search to, to generate good solution and how many how many good solution I have to, to generate 10 100 1000 1 million depends and then once I have this set of good solution how I can apply some machine learning to to intensify the search so it can be how I can do some decomposition from this this set of solution how I can decompose the problem Another question, in the parameter and search operator setting, when you say that uh, you 
uh, must to fix the parameters for different instance and different problem uh -huh. totally uh, in the mm, yeah it could be a good way to work to try to uh, train uh, a standard uh, instance for a problem and fix these uh, parameters for the rest of the instances or the sizes I uh, should sure, uh, we are talking about that huh you are talking about this slide? Mm, yeah. yeah, of course. So, as I told you, the, the parameters depends on the instance. Yeah, but are completely uh, independent of different instances, or one instance could fix parameters for the rest of. No, the idea is this one. Suppose that you have a problem to solve, okay? okay? And you have a large set of input instances. You have it. So, from from this set of instances that you have, you will learn what is the best, you will learn about what is the best tuning for those instances. This is the model. Now, once the model, you have it, you have a new instance to solve. New one. You never solve this one. Then you will apply, just apply your model to tell you which, what are the the best parameters for this new instance. But this new instance, you never solve this instance. It's a new one. And in practice, we have this kind of things in practice. In, in real problems, huh? in real problems. So you have, and you can apply this even for similar problems. Tomorrow, you have similar problem. You will not learn from scratch. So you can even do some, what we call some transfer learning. So the idea, in practical, this is very important. Suppose that uh, you have a real application about VQ routing or something like this. Every day you have a new instance. Every day you have a new instance. And in the past you solved a huge number of instances. So you have a model that is improving its efficiency and tells you what is the best parameter. So tomorrow you have a new instance, what are the best parameters? And you can even improve the model every day with this new instance. Yes, but uh, as you, uh, I skip one very important question. Yes, this is a uh, very complex question. This kind of what are the features that you have to, to, to use? Because uh, this is the problem. Ah, Non-trivial task in, in, in all those kind of things is which features you will use which features you will use. The solution, the presentation of the solution, what are the features you will use for the instance? And how you define the similarity between the instance and the problems? What is the, the function that uh, compute the similarity, the distance function in the instance? So those are very complex questions. For your problem, you have to find what are the, what is the distance between two instances? What is the distance between two problems? We are talking about similarity, so you have to define the distance. Mm -hmm. And you have to define what, what are the features you are using. If the features, what are the, what are the features you are using? Which features you are using? Because if, not, if you don't define the features, how you can do machine learning? <laughs> Th those are very comp important questions. I skip them, but because it's problem specific. But you have to find the good features of your uh, of your problem. You know, people working in image classification in the last 30 years, the main job is how, what are the best features in the image? <laughs> this is the main issue. And what is nice with this deep learning, they don't need any feature. They take the image as it is. Everything is a feature. The image, and let's go. This is the, the new thing in deep learning. No features. It takes the image. But before this deep learning techniques, people are trying to find what are the good features in the image to make the model more efficient. Mm -hmm. So here, if you are using some deep learning, you can use the whole instance <laughs> as the feature. <laughs> Yes. The, yeah, the people that years ago were publishing in machine learning, 
In which areas are they publishing now? People from machine learning? Yes. From, uh, to which area they are moved? P uh, the people from machine learning, not for optimization? Uh, no, from machine learning. Ah. Because are decreasing the number of people. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, you are talking about this. Uh, uh, you know, publication in machine learning and optimization is completely different. I will tell you the, the huge difference between the two. Are there people from machine learning here? No. In machine learning, <laughs> in machine learning, let's start with optimization. <laughs> with optimization or uh, operational research, in general, conferences are just, you know, there is no difficult acceptance or rate. It's just to, to, to make some people discuss and discovering new results. So conferences are, in CV, is like nothing in operational research, okay? Mostly journals, some journals, well-known journals, publications, okay? Machine learning is completely different. There are some conferences, if you publish in those three, four conferences, uh -huh. you are considered as very good researcher. Very, very small acceptance rate. There are three, four conferences, and I will tell you something, for those conferences, even the number of registration is limited. You, if you will registrate today, you will not accept is a lot of demand. But in those conferences, so for people in machine learning, it's easy for them to, to make the difference between good CV and not good CV. If you publish in those three conferences, you will have a job, <laughs> I will tell you. They are preferring to publish in conference to uh, ah, yeah, yeah. In machine learning, they have those three conferences. The journals, they are good journals, of course. Machine learning, uh, but the, they have three or four conferences. If you publish in those conferences... Then the research in machine learning are not decreased. Oh, no. Uh -huh. Oof. Those conferences, there are more than 3,000 people. Uh -huh. The number of submission is 10,000 papers. Imagine. Thousands of papers, the, 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 the revision, the review, this is uh, like uh, optimization problem, it's complex. Yeah. They are reviewing thousands of papers, and good papers. Pap you know Google, Facebook, Amazon, they are publishing there. And even the, 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 the huge industrial, they, 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 they would like to publish there. So the best publication for Google, Facebook, Amazon are there. So if you have, I, 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 I just, I was in one conference and one from uh, Amazon. In his slide, say we have five publications in this conference. In his presentation, you know, it's like uh, they, they are computing the, the the quality of the job compared to the number of papers in those conferences. Optimization, this is not the case. Different culture, different. More questions? Thank you.